Well, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for being here. It's great to be back uh, two years in a row, and this year we got a bigger room. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for filling it. So thanks for doing your job anyway. We've got a great night of music for you and uh, some special guests with us up here tonight, so we'll tell you more about that. Uh, but anyway, we're going to get you into the spirit of Christmas here in a very Celtic way. And um, you might be asking, well, what's the difference? What's a Celtic Christmas versus a regular Christmas? Well, Celtic nations are not just Ireland, Scotland. There's also, uh, there's also the north of uh, Spain, which is um, uh, in the northwest of Spain, which is Asturias and Galicia. There's the west of France called Brittany. Um, and um, we're even going to play something from England. So... It might not be Celtic, but you know, they're neighbors. So <laughs> anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna start off here, uh, this next piece, I think you will all know, uh, it is called, O Holy Night.
Thank you. Oh, we're going to uh, mix up the evening here musically with uh, <coughs> some, obviously some Christmas tunes you're well aware of and familiar with. Other ones you're not going to be so familiar with. And um, we're going to do a couple of movie themes and also some jigs and reels, which you already heard a little bit of. So we're going to get your feet stamping as well as your Christmas caroling going. So anyway, I'm like to now introduce uh, a wonderful guest. Uh, she's a great friend of ours and just a tremendous musician. She's all the way, she flew out from Ireland a couple of nights ago. She was living in America for a, a short time, so we did a lot of playing together, but she's back in Ireland now. But uh, please give a warm welcome to Nula Kennedy. Hi. Hello, everybody. Hi to the, the top, middle, and bottom here. It's great to see everyone here this afternoon. It feels like nighttime already. I kind of get that special nighttime. I was always uh, a night owl, even as a child. And um, it's great to be here with you all and with Eric. I met Eric, I was living in, um, in Venice Beach in LA for a few years there. And I used to walk along the, the seafront with my very old fashioned traditional Irish music in my headphones and wonder, is anyone else around here doing the same thing? <laughs> I doubt it. But then I met Eric and um, it was a, a great meeting. We just kind of clicked um, musically together and um, things kind of went on from there. So um, in August, myself and my family moved back. We went from Venice to Ennis. <laughs> so now we're living in Ennis in the beautiful County Clare, which we love. It's just a, a fabulous place for music. And if you ever are going to Ireland and you like Irish music, that is a place that you absolutely should stop off at. Um, so, but prior to being in LA, I spent about half my life living in Bonnie Bonnie, Scotland. I'm sure we have a few Scots. Have we got any Scots heritage people here tonight? Okay, the new. And this um, next song is a, a beautiful old song, a very old melody dating hundreds of years back into history. But um, it's said that Rossetti, Dante Gabriel Rossetti in the 1850s put these words to it. And they're um, kind of a lullaby um, to a child and just talking about Christmas. And he says, Baloo Lammy, like, hush, my little child. But probably my favorite line in this song is, thy subjects adoring, watch over thee here. Because anyone who's had a baby knows that once the baby comes home, you are the subjects. <laughs> And things have changed. <laughs> so it's a beautiful song called Balu Lami.
Thank you very much. So we were in Scotland a minute ago. We're going to go to the west of France. Uh, this is a, an area called Brittany. It's below Normandy. And uh, these are Celtic people there. They play bagpipes. They have their own type of bagpipe called a binu. And uh, they also play the Scottish bagpipes there. Uh, but they're Celtic people and they have their own tradition. They have their own language as well. So this next piece of music is a Celtic carol from the uh, area of Brittany in France, and it's actually going to be sung by Nula in Breton. So a year ago when we were asking Nula if she'd do the Christmas show with us uh, and sing in a language or two, we've upped it to Latin, <laughs> Irish, Gaelic, English, of course, Scots, Gaelic, and Breton. Am I forgetting anything? I think that's, a, that's enough. <laughs> oh, and... You know, we forgot to do this one in rehearsal, but we're going to do a carol in Swahili, and so I hope you're ready for that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, like Ireland, as you'll hear, the music of Brittany can be quite sad as well. So here we go. This is called Canop Noel.
Thank you. Thanks very much. Now we're going to move to Scotland, and uh, we're going to do a very beautiful piece. Um, this, uh, this is one of my favorites, and it comes from the, uh, the Hebride Islands up in the, in the north. Um, but uh, I'll let Nula tell you about it. Before that, I want to welcome our other special guest on stage here tonight, who will be featured in this next piece on the harp. Please give it a warm welcome to Stephanie Bennett on the harp. Great to meet Stephanie for this um, bunch of gigs that we're doing here. Wonderful musician and very knowledgeable. When, when she came in for a rehearsal, she greeted me in Scottish Gaelic and was saying, oh, how's it going and, and speaking, and it was wonderful, it was so nice. Um, and Stephanie was telling me that the, the tune that we're gonna play coming up soon, that I actually didn't know this about this song, was a charm, so it said, for sailors to keep them safe at sea. And then later on in the 1800s, a Roman Catholic priest by the name of Father Ronald Rankin, he put the words as they're known today to this song. So there's actually 29 verses. <laughs> but don't worry, we're not gonna sing them all or we'd be here all night. And um, we'd all know Scottish Gaelic by the end of it. <laughs> We're just going to do three verses. We're going to do number one, number 23, and number three. <laughs> so th this um, song was traditionally performed at midnight mass in the islands of Barra, South Uist, and beautiful Eriske. I mean, these islands are so gorgeous. If you ever have a chance to go, you should go there and go in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really a pretty special place. So Tala Krista. Christ's lullaby.
Thank you, everybody. Well, it's just wonderful to be performing in such a beautiful hall. Uh, we're delighted to be here at Soka. I heard a rumor that this is one of Yo-Yo Ma's favorite concert halls to play in. I don't know if it's the one, but it's one of the ones. So I think that's a, a good thing here. We're very happy to be here. And thank you for spending your Sunday with us and uh, kicking in some holiday cheer here in a Celtic way. Uh, we're going to move on now and start second half with some movie stuff. Actually, this is television. We're going to go to a show that both Stephanie and I work on. Uh, we're in our fifth season now of Outlander. Do we have any Outlander fans? It's great. Season one, when we, Dirk and I were performing uh, some of the material from uh, season one and two, we would say, any Outlander fans? And you'd get... You get like a lot of crickets and two people <laughs> clapping. I'm glad to see that that has changed. Anyway, we're gonna do a kind of uh, little uh, nod to season one here. You're gonna hear the, the, the lovely main title tracks, which is uh, actually a, a traditional Scottish tune called the Sky Boat Song, sung by Nula. And, um, but we're gonna do a couple of uh, little bits and pieces from season one. This is uh,
Thanks, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the <laughs> portion of our show where I speak to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Eric and I started uh, this project about six years ago now. I think this is our sixth year of Celtic Christmas concerts. And um, it's become a real tradition for us. And, you know, obviously we hoped that it would grow over time. And uh, with the support of some key people, it sure has. <laughs> um, and I'd really like to thank Renee Bodie for that. She's been so supportive of this project. So thank you. And it's a real treat, real treat to play here. Um, I love coming back down here for these. You know, um, Eric and I have known each other for a very long time, mu much longer than we've been playing music together. Actually, we go all the way back to junior high school. <laughs> and, um, you know, we, we went to different, different high schools and we knew about each other back then and then we kind of went, went our separate ways and, and then about, I don't know, 15 years ago or so, uh, just professionally, we kind of, our paths reconverged and uh, we really enjoyed working together. So, um, you know, eventually we, we put this project together and it's been great. And I, I live out of state now, I'm obviously from down Southern California. I live in Oregon now and teach up at a university there. And, and I really look forward to coming back down here to do these shows. And I've gotten to know Eric's family and, uh, and his wife's family. And, you know, of course, Nula and now Stephanie's part of the family. It's just a great event. So there you go. Another, um, I just want to hug you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Another little tradition for me has become playing this, this next piece. Um, it's an arrangement of the Christmas carol, We Three Kings, um, that I did many, many years ago. And um, I actually started writing a, a solo guitar piece, uh, must have been around Christmas time, and then, uh, you know, I got sort of stuck and started playing We Three Kings and, uh, and it stuck. So um, here's We Three Kings.
is Dirk Freyman. say it's one of my highlights of the evening is not doing anything and <laughs> listen to that <laughs> anyway um, we're gonna do something now from a movie I did gosh 24 years ago now who's counting except me uh, this was a movie that I got flown to London and uh, recorded with London Sympathy Orchestra uh, at Abbey Road Studios and um, it was uh, it was not my first movie, but um, it's actually about 50 movies ago by now, but it was one of my early ones. And it was the, the kind of first film where I got to really go up into the big leagues on. I did quite a few, several features before this, but this was like being uh, in the 1920s, being in the uh, minor leagues and being called up by the New York Yankees to play with uh, Babe Ruth. and the gang here. So I got called from a man named James Horner, who was a very uh, famous film composer who I obviously knew who he was, um, seen a lot of his films in the theater, like Field of Dreams and Legends of the Fall and uh, Star Trek. I'd seen those before I worked with him, and I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. But anyway, so went to London, and uh, we recorded Mel Gibson's Braveheart uh, there. And um, it was quite an amazing experience. But um, one of the things that was a surprise was we were there for about two weeks recording at Abbey Road every day. And um, it, toward the end of the recording here, I, um, I got asked by James Horner, uh, he said, uh, listen, I have an idea for a jig to be played over the top of one of the themes of Braveheart. Would you mind coming up with something and then, you know, we'll record it and you'll, you'll play this piece as a counter melody all over the, the top of the, the string section playing one of the main themes. So um, I had like 24 hours to come up with something. So I'm staying in this really posh English hotel that, um, I don't know if you know, but there's a thing with the Irish and the English, you know? So, <laughs> a little bit of history. So I was playing in my room and, you know, I was getting the door banged on, you know, shut up. You can't really tell them that you're working on a movie like Braveheart because it hasn't come out yet. They don't even know what it is. It means nothing. So I went into my bathroom of this very posh English hotel, and it sounded amazing because the bathroom was about as big as my house back in California. And it was all tiled and everything, so you play in the pipe. So there's no chair in there except the toilet. So. <laughs> commenced to write this piece of music sitting on an English toilet in London for a movie called Braveheart. So we're going to do... <laughs> we're going to do our arrangement of this jig from Braveheart. It's called The Legend Spreads. And uh, we're going to go into the main theme after that. But um, the, uh, the, let's, let's give a big hand for the low-budget London Symphony Orchestra up here with me today. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Let's hear it for Eric Riegler, everybody. So beautiful, beautiful. And you know, of course, the pipes are the king of the instruments in Ireland. You know, our, our national symbol is the harp, of course, which we're very proud of and we love, we love our harp and it's on our flag and it's just um, a gorgeous instrument. And I have to say that I do have a soft spot for the Illin pipes. They're one of the most challenging instruments to play. They have so many buttons and bellows and things going on and the maintenance is unbelievable but in Ireland we say it takes 21 years to make a piper seven years listening seven years practicing this is right isn't it seven years playing and then you can finally call yourself a piper after 21 years so luckily Eric has that under his belt <laughs> I'm glad I'm just turned 21 too <laughs> I'm a quick learner. <laughs> now we're going to continue now with the song in the Irish language, the beautiful, one of the oldest languages in Europe and, um, and a very evocative language with lots of different meanings to the words. It's, I think, um, one of the nicest languages in the world, um, closely related, of course, to Scottish Gaelic. Um, and after this song, the first tune that we're going to play, we're kind of going into a medley after that, is actually also a song called Na Cana Um So they're kind of linked, but I'm sure that you will recognize the first song here because it's one of the most famous pieces of music in the world. And of course, it's such a, a great tune. It's been translated into almost every language that we have, um, so please, Feel free to join along in whatever language you know it in. In Irish, it's called Iha Cún, and you'll know it as Silent Night. <laughs> Yeah. 
Thank you very much. I just realized in the middle of those uh, tunes there, those are called slip jigs, by the way, which are in 9-8 time. The one in the middle, well, we stuck our little English friend in there. That was called the Coventry Carol. Sorry, England, that's about as much as you're going to get tonight. No, actually, this next piece of music, right? Is this in English, this next one? Sort of, yeah. Okay, well, England, you might be back. Well, we'll see <laughs> if you're good. Um, anyway, so that was the Coventry Carol, Carol in the middle here. But um, anyway, we're going to play two more for you. This is a vi first one's a very, very old piece. Are you going to... Why don't you tell them about this thing? But before he does that, I'm going to say that uh, we're going to play two pieces in a row, and we're going to say our good night to you. You don't have to leave if you know what I mean. Squint, squint, <laughs> wink, wink. But officially, there's two more pieces of music here uh, that uh, you will recognize the last one. Wink, wink. There might be another one. No, I didn't say that. But uh, anyway, <laughs> got two more pieces. And thanks so much for coming. Uh, it's been great to play for you today in a beautiful hall. And uh, I want to also say again, thank you to Renee Bodie, who uh, has believed in us and wanted us to perform here. And if you don't mind as well, we have a crew that is behind the scenes that has uh, been very, very helpful. And they, they travel with us when we go places and make us sound good. So please give a warm welcome and goodbye to our tech crew, that will be Kevin and Brett. So thank you again, and uh, Dirk is going um, to tell We you. do have some stocking stuffers, oh, yes. don't we? We have to mention them. We will be um, able to sign CDs, and there's a nice print, and there's a whole bunch of stuff out there. Um, so if you're if you have to get any gifts last minute, you know now's the time to get them in. Um, if you're like me and not at all organised for Christmas, then you can get ahead of the curve. Um, we'll be out there, I think, won't we? Yes, we will be out there after the last wink, wink possible tune that we may play that is not on the record here, <laughs> off the record. But um, yes, so please help lighten Nula's suitcase because she has to go back to Ireland. So anyway, thank you so much. And uh, Dirk is going to tell you about this next. This is a new piece for us, by the way. It is. I'll make it brief. Um, this uh, is a piece of music which became popular as a Christmas song in, uh, in Ireland in the uh, 14th century. Uh, but the melody is actually much or older than that, probably two, at least a couple hundred years earlier. It was a melody called Brid on Breer, which is Old English for bird on a briar. Um, and the, the words to that uh, were sort of body, let's, let's leave it at that. And, uh, but it was such a beautiful melody that uh, this is true of a lot of pieces that became um, popular in the church or around Christmas time. Um, even liturgical music sometimes took these great songs, these great melodies, and put new words to them, just like with Tala Krista. Um, so this is Pepirid's Virgo. We've got Nula going back to, switching back to Latin for us. Uh, and these are the words that were written by the Irish Bishop of Osry in the 14th century.
much, everybody. Happy holidays to you. Thank you. We didn't push you into that, did we? <laughs> I'd like to say one more time, it's been a pleasure to be here and to play with these wonderful musicians. Please give a big thank you to Stephanie Bennett. <laughs> and also my partner in crime over here for a good few years here, on guitar, Dirk Frameth. And of course, she came all the way from Ireland two nights ago. I think she's still got jet lag, but we never would have known it today. <laughs> She'll probably be up all night, and we'll be having a struggle to keep up with her. From Dundalk, Ireland, <laughs> Nuala Kennedy. On pipes, the one and only, the legend that is here to play for you all today, Eric Rigler. Thank you. We've got one more for you. This will send you home with bells on, and uh, hopefully we'll see you up top in the lobby in the next few minutes. Thank you very much, everybody.
Thank you, everybody.